<clears throat> for shits and giggles, I decided I'm going to do this. I am going to go through and read every single collection piece and then show the action figure at the very end that you get. Um, for context, this is for finding the emblems. There are four emblems in each stage. So once you get four emblems, you get a figure. Once you get all the first emblems in each five chapters, you get a figure. So you get all four in one chapter, you get a figure. You get all first medallions, you get a figure. You get all second medallions, emblems, whatever you want to call it, you get a figure. You get, you get, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure you catch my drift. Anyway, we're going to start off with Leon. He's right there. He's the first one anyway. And here we go. Leon S. Kennedy. At 36 years of age, Leon S. Kennedy is the most respected agent working for the U.S. government, reporting directly to the president himself. The horrors he witnessed as a result of a biohazard outbreak known as the Raccoon City Incident left him with a deep-rooted hatred of bioterrorism and those who would use it. While his demeanor is calm and rational, it should not be mistaken for apathy. He will take the initiative on any mission he's been assigned often putting himself in danger in order to save the innocent. He takes his mission seriously, making decisions cautiously and logically. From time to time, however, his sardonic wit will surface, recalling his time as a good-natured rookie cop with a sense of duty who was able to maintain his sense of humor, even in tough times. Leon and Adam Leon Kennedy and U.S. President Adam Benford, who are not only close friends, but champions of similar causes. When President Benford, a high-ranking government official, he handpicked Leon, elevating him to his high-ranking status. The two men were both motivated by a righteous desire to root out bioterrorism following the events that transpired in Raccoon City in 1998. Adam had a reputation for being one of the fellow, one of the few politicians with integrity, a man of his word, and Agent Kennedy found himself able to trust a man who had never directly faced the evils of bioterrorism. With mutual goals and a mutual respect, they grew close during their 10 years of fighting bioterrorism together. Unfortunately, their friendship just abruptly ended during a biohazard outbreak, one with eerie echoes that mirror the tragedy of Raccoon City when Agent Kennedy is forced to shoot and kill President Benford. Field Operations Support Field Operations Support, FOS, is an organization operating at the highest level of the U.S. government. Its original mission was to provide support for Agents World. As the dangers posed by bioterrorism came to take priority for the U.S. security, the FOS was evolved to oversee the operations that deal with responses to and prevention of bioterrorism. The FOS was originally formed in 2011 by Adam Benford, with Ingrid Hunnigan installed as operations coordinator and Leon Kennedy as its chief field agent. Zombies in 1998, a biohazard incident involving the T-Virus contaminated the entirety of Raccoon City. Inhabitants infected by the virus succumbed to infection, but the corpses were reanimated by the same virus into shambling, flesh-eating creatures. Reports from the incident indicated that many of the revenants' eyes were glazed over, and their skin had either decayed or been flayed. As these revenants resembled the walking dead of horror fiction, they were given the decidedly unscientific name of zombies. The source of the current biohazard event in Tall Oaks remains unknown, but the stages of infection for the victims bear a striking resemblance to those of Raccoon City. For better or for worse, the appellation of zombie has been applied to these victims as well. Is that supposed to be appellation? Like appalled? I don't know. Ooh, what did we get? What action figure did we get, Daddy? We got Leon S. Kennedy. Look at that sexy man. I'll be come on. Okay, yeah, no, that did. I don't know if I have his other outfits or not. Also, if you look at the thing, it kind of looks like the, uh... Oh, I do. It kind of looks like his Resident Evil 4 outfit without the jacket. Okay, that looks like that's all we got. Alright, Chapter 2. Ingrid Hunnigan. 
Ingrid Hunnigan is a 33-year-old mission coordinator for the U.S. Department of Defense of Field Operations Support. In 2004, she was instrumental in helping Agent Kennedy recover the then-president's daughter from a terrorist group. Level-headed and intelligent, she is competent at hacking into most security systems, as well as handling the relevant mission intelligence. She is the guiding voice that has success successfully delivered Agent Kennedy from many perilous predicaments. Leon and the Raccoon City Incident In 1998, a biohazard incident involving a man-made virus contaminated the entire town of Raccoon City. The town of 100,000 became ground zero for the world's single worst biohazard outbreak in the 20th century. The, s the clinical naming of the event as the Raccoon City Incident does nothing to express the tragedy and horror that occurred in that idyllic American town. Okay. With 100,000 city of the population, that is not a town, that is a city. I live in a town of 11,000 people. 100,000 is not a town. During the incident, a rookie police officer named Leon Kennedy was caught up in the nightmare. He was attacked by human infected, aka zombies, and the umbrella engineered bioorganic weapons, aka Birkin. And the the T-Series Tyrant. Against all odds, he and a few other survivors were able to escape from the city, Sherry and Claire. He regretted that he was only able to save so few people that day, and the events that transpired in Raccoon City etched themselves indelibly on his mind. From that point, from that point on, he vowed he would do all he could to ensure the world would never see a tragedy like Raccoon City repeated. Which happens in this game, so good on you, bud. Also, the way that is, like, it was only able to save a few, like, what happened there? What, what, did she, like, accidentally tab? It was like, well, I guess, might as well just send it in. Makes no sense. Tall Oaks Cathedral in the Underground Lab. Standing out in the skyline of Tall Oaks is a cathedral that marks a plot of land that has been in the Simmons family for generations. This land primarily serves as a meeting ground for the family's secretive dealings, and there are many hidden passageways and booby traps to obstruct any potential interlopers. The current head of the family, Derek C. Simmons, recently had a portion of the underground chamber refurbished into a modern research laboratory so he could have scientists conduct research on the sea virus. La, poti La Potitza. This is the weird looking tit monster. La Potitza is a victim of the sea virus, although one that is extremely mutated. The word La Potitza ironically is derived from the Serbian word for woman of beauty. The creature's body is covered in large pores that secrete a deadly gas. Anyone who inhales its fume will die and be reanimated as a zombie. One creature has the potential to infect an area within a three mile radius. Unlike a traditional zombie infection, which is spread by a zombie bite or contact with contaminated blood, this creature turns the virus into an airborne agent, thus creating a contaminant that is harder to avoid. The bioterror attack that Agent Kennedy encountered in Tall Oaks was triggered by this creature. And of course, for completing chapter two, you get, oh, also it looks like Leon, but it's Helena Harper, the boring woman who's basically just, you know, a Claire knockoff. She's, she's a poor, she's a poor woman's Claire. I'm just, it's true. Helena Harper one. Helena Harper is a 24 year old U.S. government agent. Her sister is Deborah. Is her only known living relative. During the Tall Oaks terrorist attack, she is dispatched by the U.S. Secret Service to protect President Benford. She is a woman of strong moral convictions and is very sympathetic to the plight of others, although she does not let her emotions get the better of her from time to time. Oh, oh no, she does let her emotions, whatever. Helena Harper 2. Helena Harper doesn't compromise her beliefs and is not one to step aside and let others take charge. She does, however, have a tendency to let her emotions get the best of her. She was in the top of her class and the agency's first choice for the job, but officials were concerned that she would let her morals get in the way of her work. They were right. 
While investigating a series of murders, Helena successfully found and apprehended the killer. In the progress, she used excessive force on the suspect and was suspended from the agency. She claimed she had to shut the killer up because he was making threats in front of the victim's family. After her suspension period was over, she found herself in situations where she couldn't maintain her self-control. When Deborah's boyfriend became abusive and enraged, Helena shot and injured him. Her superiors were unwilling to overlook her gross misconduct, but they didn't want to fire her, so they transferred her to the Secret Service. During the attack on Tall Oaks, Helena was manipulated by Derek Simmons and his plan to assassinate President Adam Benford. I don't know if they explain it, so I'll hold on to that thought. The Catacombs. The catacombs that maze their way under the tall oaks go back almost 400 years. They are the final resting place of not only members of the Simmons family, but those who have served the mysterious organization known as The Family. Jack Baker is a fan of that name. Those, these underground burial chambers are not known to the public, but the catacombs themselves are still protected by many elaborate contraptions to keep outsiders from digging too deeply into the family's secret affairs. Although the catacombs are primarily used by the Simmons family, the primitively constructed caves and altars hint at the existence of inhabitants prior to them. Deborah Harper. Deborah Harper is a 20-year-old college student and Helena's sister. Unlike her sister, Deborah is a carefree party girl. Their different approaches to life are a cause of friction between them. But those issues aside, the two are actually very close. The two sisters' lives are thrown into chaos when Derek Simmons kidnaps Deborah and uses her for the family's C-virus experience. Experiments. When Helena is reunited with her sister, it's not the happy reunion she had hoped for. Deborah had been turned into a hideous creature with no semblance of the humanity she once had other than the gentle facial features that hint at her former beauty. And we gotta look at the man himself, Derek Clifford Simmons. They even gave him a freaking middle name. Oh, okay. Um, what is what is this? Oh, this is the the train monster Simmons. All right, this is T Rex Simmons. I like T Rex Simmons. Probably one of my favorite boss fights in the game. Ow, yeah. Uh, this figuring doesn't really do his fly any justice. It is so freaking huge. I think that's it for Simmons. Yeah. Leon and Ada. Ada Wong is a spy whose major activities occur off the grid. Not much is known about her, not even if Ada Wong is an alias or her real name. Ada first encountered Leon Kennedy during the Raccoon City incident in 1998, when Leon was a callow rookie police officer trying desperately to escape from the nightmare that had enveloped Raccoon City. Ada was in the city carrying out a mission for a rival company to the Umbrella Corporation when circumstances threw the two together. Ada hid the nature of her activities while using Leon to help her carry them out. The life and death struggle they would endure brought them close together and Ada ended up saving Leon's life. Unfortunately, they had to make their way out of the city separately, but they could not forget what they felt for each other. Following their escape, their paths would cross from time to time, Leon as a US government operative and Ada as a spy. Ada makes no qualms about using Leon when it suits her needs, but Leon is loath to bring himself to be done with her. They don't consider each other enemies, but it's hard to tell how they feel for each other. Complicated is the word that aptly summarizes their relationship. Helena's crime. Derek Simmons coerced Helena Harper into helping him assassinate President Benford when he kidnapped her sister Deborah. Helena had no choice but to send out an alert over the Secret Service's radio that a group had entered Ivy University with the intent to kill President Benford. The president was on the campus to deliver a speech, and the Secret Service made sure the president was secure before his speech. A number of agents were dispatched to look for the suspects. This created the opening Derek needed. 
Helena loved her sister, but she couldn't let herself be party to a terrorist attack. She rushed to the campus to entreat the agents to give up their wild goose chase and protect the president. Many of the agents were aware of her past infractions, so they were disinclined to believe her. Then the attacks came. It became half of the agents were out looking for assassins. The service was slow in evacuating President Minford and was unable to save his life. Brazak. Brazak is a victim of the C virus, although one that is extremely mutated. Brazak is derived from the Serbian word for rapids. Its aerial and ocular facilities are practically non existent, so it relies on kinetic sensations based on movement in the water to hunt its prey. It will indiscriminately attack all moving prey, be it human or zombie. Cadavers that float in the water, however, do not interest it. Risklapanje. Risklapanje is a victim of the C virus, although one that is extremely mutated. Risklapanje is derived from the Serbian word for demolition. The smooth white skin that envelopes this creature is an exoskeleton designed to protect the slug like part of its main body. Located in the torso, even if part of this creature's humanoid form is destroyed, it will not have any effect on the main body. These detached body parts can still search for prey independently and ensnare it. The flexible nature of the structure allows it to pass through narrow openings like ventilation ducts and other tight spaces. Its primary weakness is fire, and when it encounters intense heat, its main body will leap out of its humanoid exoskeleton to escape danger. That is Bo's least favorite enemy in this entire game. It's like a loose version of the... Uh, Iron Maiden and stuff. Uh, President Adam Benford. Oh yeah, he's got the zombie form. Yep, <laughs> he's a zombie, zombie president. Derek C. Simmons. Derek C. Simmons, 46 year old, is an aide to the President of the United States. He is a ruthless perfectionist, a personality well disposed to rising to the high echelon of power and government. He is the current head of the family, a secret fraternity of powerful movers and shakers that have manipulated the development of the Western world for centuries. This organization will do whatever is necessary to ensure stability and world order, fearing the ensuing chaos that would result from President Benford's plan to reveal the truth about the Raccoon City incident. Mr. Simmons orchestrates his own bioterror attack, where the president would be but one of the many casualties. So there you go. That's why he did what he was doing. He assassinated Derek C. Simmons. Uh, Derek C. Simmons and assassinated the president because the president was on the verge of uh, declassifying the Raccoon City incident files. So, i.e. telling the public what really happened during Raccoon City. Derek's first transformation. After Derek Simmons is injected with enhanced C-virus, he enters a stage 1 mutation. At this stage, his upper body maintains a humanoid appearance and his violent tendencies are amplified. He has yet to lose his sense of self. His legs, however, transform into something beast-like, and he is powerful enough to outrun a high-speed train. He can also use shards of his own bones as projectiles. You can fire them off with deadly accuracy. Any bone matter lost in this manner is regrown thanks to the effects of the C-Virus. Derek's second transformation. As the C-Virus infection begins to take root in Derek's body, he enters a stage 2 mutation. At this stage, Derek's body resembles a gigantic dinosaur, and his musculature is quite dense. Unlike the stage 1 mutation, stage 2 Derek behaves instinctually instead of rationally. His driving force is to devour his enemy and even goes as far as to leap into the sky and attack a helicopter Ada is piloting. Derek's third transformation. Derek's body continues to mutate and as he enters the third stage, Derek's humanity is completely gone at this point, but his survival instinct remains. He ingests multiple corpses in order to give his body the organic matter needed to assume this form. This new hideous form resembles an amalgamation of multiple insect species 
When stage 3 Derek loses a limb or other body parts, he can regenerate it by ingesting more corpses. He could in theory live forever as long as there are corpses for him to ingest. And here's the uh La Potista. Yep, that's gorgeous. Whopper! Big Whopper, baby! Oh, I was not expecting there to be two. Of course, Capcom put one in the draw me like a French girl pose. Bloodshot? Oh, Bloodshot's my favorite thing to play as in uh, Agent Hunt. Shrieker? I hate Shriekers. I hate Shriekers with a burning passion. Brazak. Oh yeah, it's like the fish shark thing. Okay, yeah, I get you. And last but not least for this is Deborah Harper. Mutated Deborah. And those are the Leon files. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, in the next episode, we will be going over Chris's. So I hope you have a great day. Remember, you can be the best you can possibly be. If you like the video, give a like, comment for the video. Super special, awesome. Subscribe if you haven't. That would really help me out. And ta-ta. For now.